morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, my fellow believer. It is a great privilege. It is a great opportunity to be here this morning in the studios of the evangelist ministry and preach the gospel to all of you, my friends. A live message from the studios of the evangelist ministry. We spread, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and his saving grace. Our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the topic of this message is pursue for joy. If this morning we have our Bible, please let's open the book of Romans chapter five, verse one to the verse five. The Bible reads this way. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but with glory and tribulations. Also knowing that tribulation works passion and passion experience and experience hope. And hope make not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. My dear friends, the subject of this message is pursue for joy. My dear friend, we're confronted in today's days one of the biggest calamities in the United States, coronavirus. And I might say this morning, most, most of us do not choose to have difficult life. But my dear friends, but life choose us most of the time. But my, the reality is this, my friends, but, but we can choose how we would react in case of calamities in our personal life. We can choose how we would react. Someone said pain is inevitable. But my dear friends, I will tell you this morning, but misery is optional. It is true what people said, sometimes pain is inevitable, but misery is optional. However, however, when difficulties arise, sadness often seems to be the only option. But uh, let me tell you this morning. Let me tell you this day about a friend who is a believer in Christ Jesus, who was physically and emotional drained out due to the extreme pressure of life and this calamity that we're confronting today, coronavirus. 
my dear friends, he was in a depressed mood. I asked him how he felt, and he said sadly, well, it is clear that joy is not an option. He said, joy is not an option. And my dear friend, very clear, he said that joy is not an option. But I say, dear friends, let me tell you this morning, dear friends, I answer to him very seriously. You are right. You are right. Joy is not an option. It is your responsibility. It is your responsibility because as a Christians, we are, or a Christian we call ourselves. Let me tell you, we are, as a Christian, as a Christian we are, it is our responsibility to maintain faith and joy. Faith and joy do not abandon us. But the reality is that we often abandon faith and joy. And Jesus Christ said, who said that? Jesus Christ said, peace, I live with you. My peace, I give unto you. Not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. According to the book of John. 1427. In that moment, I remember my friend, he was shocked of my words. He said to me, my friend, pastor, he said, uh, uh, you talk about of joy as if this joy were a responsibility. And I replied to him again, you are right. I explained to him that we have the responsibility, responsibility to God, to ourselves, to this society, and to others to overcome our state of mind and fight in faith to maintain joy. If you remember the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5, Paul give us the following reason for joy. He said, therefore, being justified, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a verse one. He explained that we have peace with God through, the, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So that now we live in peace. We live in peace with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Access to the grace and hope for the future glory. By, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse number two. My dear friends, joy give us to know that by trusting in Jesus Christ, we can now enjoy the love of God. And one day we will share with him all his greatness because this is the promise. <clears throat> My dear friends, we can rejoice also. We can rejoice also when we run into problems and trials or tribulation, for we know that joy helps us develop endurance in our personal life. Amen, my friends. I said that we can rejoice also when we run into problems and trials and tribulation, for we know that joy helps us develop endurance. And endurance develops a strength of character in every one of us. 
and character. Character is strength to us, confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly, how dearly God loved us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our heart with his love. But, my dear friends, the question of this morning is this. How we should react in this present time with this pestilence we call coronavirus? The question is how we should react to this pestilence called coronavirus. My dear friends, to understand all of this, we should read the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Let's meditate in this book. He said, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting. He said, my brothers, come it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work passion. But let passion have her perfect work, that you might be perfect, and entirely wanting nothing. If any, he said, if any, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give to all men liberally and unbridled not, and it shall be given to him. And then, my dear friends, the book of James is telling you how to react in times of troubles and tribulations. How you should react in time of storms in your personal life. My dear friends, although there are specific, very specific models of response to the issues of forgiveness compassion, mercy, tolerance and justice. There is a general command. It is a general command that applies to all situations. It is the divine mandate or command to consider that each trial is a reason for joy. At first, my dear friends, at first it seemed irrational. It seemed ridiculous because the problems do not produce joy. Because the problems do not produce joy. I remember when I was new in this blessing gospel. I cannot understand that. That problems produce joy. I say to myself, it's impossible. But my dear friends, sometimes when I say that in today's day, that uh, consider that every problem is a reason for joy, at the first, at the very first, seemed irrational to say that. Very irrational. It seemed ridiculous. Because problems do not produce joy, period. In reality, in reality, in reality, difficulties and joy are incomparable. They cannot be mixed. They do not work together. But, but, my dear friends, but to react spiritually and constructively, we must understand the book of James. Remember? James chapter 1 verse 2, he said very clear, my brother, he said, my brothers, 
count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Remember what he said, my dear friends. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the train of your faith work fashion, but let passion have her perfect work that you might be perfect and entirely wanting nothing. Let's remember in this present time, the book of James. My dear friends, my dear brothers, when troubles, sickness, trials, or tribulation of any kind come your way, consider it. Consider it as an opportunity for a great joy. It is what the book of James is telling us. To consider an opportunity for a great joy. At the same time, at the same time, God is affirming <clears throat> that there will be difficulties in how we should react. God is teaching us how to react in times of need. But my dear friends, God is affirming there will be difficulties in how we should react. But in this morning, my dear friends, we can be thankful for that. As we find it impossible to manage our emotions. In general, in general, emotion come and go. It is not true, my friends. In general, emotions comes and go and are usually the result, the result of life circumstances that we bring to our life. But my dear friends, emotions are the luggage that comes along with problems. Did I make myself understand? Let me explain to you a little bit more easy. I say that emotion, emotions are the luggage that comes along with problems. They are not intended to direct our answer or to give us the answers, but rather accompany us on the journey of destruction and misery and distress. And then, my dear friend, I just let you know that it's not necessary and even a mistake to feel guilty about being depressed or disappointed. Even Jesus Christ wept. Remember in the past, Jesus Christ wept. So it is not necessary or even a mistake to feel guilty about being depressed, even disappointed. Because let's remember, our Lord Jesus Christ he wept. However, my dear friends, what is wrong, let me explain to you. I want you to understand it. How, however, what is wrong is that our feelings, our feelings dictate the answer to our problems. That's a big mistake. And then, here we go again. What will be our answer? Knowing what the book of James is talking about. Let's come back to the book of James again. He said, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greet him. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into a diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work passion, but let passion have her perfect work, that you might, that you might be perfect and entirely wanting nothing. Now, 
what will be our answer in this pestilence we call coronavirus? What will be our answer? Now, let me be clear, and I hope that you understand. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 1 to the 5, he points out, I want to make myself clear. This is the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. He points out that passing the test, passing the test, is not a simple mental gymnastic. Do you understand? It's not a simple mental gymnastic of the power of positive, positive thinking. There is something else. And this text of the book of James is something else, something greatest that you might never understand before. My dear friend, wisdom. Wisdom that comes from God and a spirituality in every one of us. Now, let's think about the response of joy has a true content. I want to make myself clear because I want you to make, I want to make sure that you're ready to confront this pestilence that we call coronavirus. The response of joy has a true content. The conclusion, the conclusion of the passage make it clear that if we process, let's think about that, if we process pain correctly, we will find peace and joy in our heart. We will have a victory against any, any calamity that comes our way. Did I make myself clear? I said, my dear friend, the conclusion of the passage of this, the book of James, <clears throat> that make it clear that if we process pain correctly, it will ultimately lead us to maturity of character and equip us to abound in good works through our life and in this particular season of coronavirus. Now, what's going to happen next? Let's think about that God always has a promise for every one of us. What will happen next? God himself. I say God himself. This is a promise, my friend, that God himself will use the difficulties to produce in us conviction and capacity. Capacity that will become that will become a spiritual growth. I can give you another example. I can give you another example, my friends. Let's analyze. Let's analyze what the book of Hebrews said. Let's think about how Jesus Christ confronted the cross. Obedience and happiness. Believe it or not, obedience and happiness and joy because he will die for you. He, will, he was in joy when he come to the cross. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 said, looking unto Jesus, the author of finisher of our faith, who for the joy that we were set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Considering, considering problems as a reason for joy. Considering that every problem is a reason for joy does not necessarily, not necessarily imply that we feel happy about the difficulties of, of this problem of coronavirus, but we understand, we must understand, we must understand that in the end of, in the end, the good hands of God 
will make the experience worthy of praise with joy and thanksgiving. God is saying this way. God is telling you this way in this very moment and everything. He said, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. Now my dear friends, <clears throat> I, I believe that after this small or short meditation, we can get it to a conclusion. This mental perspective keep us focused on the conclusion of the process and not to the moment of pain or the moment of, of sadness. What allow us to respond positively is this. The answer to joy in the midst of the problem is consolidated with what we know to be true. The book of James said, knowing. Remember, he said, knowing this. Remember this part, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patient. Remember James chapter one, verse three. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patient. Now, Let's discuss the response of the process of joy. He said, knowing this, knowing this, this directly links our spiritual ability to consider or take into account our difficulties as a reason for joy. In the end, we know it truths that are absolutely true. Now, to get into this point, my dear friends, we have to understand what faith is all about. Sometimes we talk about faith. Oh, I have a faith. Oh, I, I think I have faith. Oh, I believe in that. This is not enough, my friends. Faith. Let me explain to you in a couple of words, my own words. Faith. Faith is to feel absolute. Absolute is to feel absolute trust in God, both in his power and his ability to carry out everything for which today we trust him alone. My dear friends, was a great privilege. It was a great opportunity to be here this morning. And I hope and I pray that this a small or very short sermon or meditation be for you a blessing that at the end of this this moment you grow already spiritually oh my dear friends you become wise and understanding of what's going on and and what god wants from you and from me my dear friends, God bless you and God bless America. I see you soon, very soon, alive in the same channel in the studios of the Evangelist Ministry. God bless you and God bless America.